Okay, so picking up where we left off, let's take a look at using some local weighting and some other layer techniques to animate our rig. So right now we're just kind of globally blending between two absolute layers. All right. Now what we might want to do is just localize what is getting affected by what. So maybe this leg on the left and the hand on the left as well as the head, we'd like to be controlled by the base layer. But this hand animation, we'd like to be controlled only by the hand out layer and have the rest of the body blend down. Okay, So we can do that with local weighting. What I'm going to do is actually just get rid of all these global weights on the hand out layer. So we'll just go back to where it's zero and delete those keyframes. And now we don't have any keyframes there. And we're going to set up some local weighting for this character. So to do local weighting, it's important to select the actual body parts that you want to blend to the character itself. Um, the global weighting you can do from any place really, but the local weighting you need to select the body part that you want. If you just have the cat parent selected, you'll see that the local weight is grayed out because you haven't chosen any particular body part. So what we're going to do is just go in and set the local weighting to zero for all the body parts that are not this left arm. Now cat is set up in a hub system so we're going to do that for kind of the root of each hub which is going to be this left piece. So the clavicle we're just going to drop this down and we don't actually need to keyframe anything there. So you can see that the local weight for this is going to be zero now and actually if we just select the parent again and turn the global weight of the entire layer all the way up you'll see that the local weight for this is at zero so it blends all the way down to the base layer no matter what we do with that other layer. And we'll do this for the other body parts so we can go ahead and select the uh, neck of the character and we can set that down and the head of the character. We set the local weight there down and the leg of the character as well. Okay, So now the leg, the arm, and the head are all going to be controlled only by that base layer. And with the handout animation on our top layer, you can see that we get kind of the best of both worlds. So we have any of the animation from that arm just on that particular layer. Okay, and we can do this a little further. We don't have animation on the other parts, but we can go to the rest of this rig and just kind of zero out any of the local weights on this layer just so that only that left hand is controlled by this layer. So this is a great way of adjusting local weights so that your character has control over the animation per layer and you can do a lot of different blending there. Now just as we did with the global weights, uh, we can also animate these things at different times. So let's just go ahead and select this arm and with this local weight, we haven't animated anything yet, we've just set it to zero, but let's turn on auto key and we'll go to about frame 30 and for the local weight, we'll actually bring this all the way up to 100 at zero and set a hold keyframe at 100 and then decide that if we want this to animate between 25 and 40 we'll bring that local weight down. So now we're controlling the local weight on that arm to blend down and give us a different animation for just that body part in the layer system. Okay now I want to take a look at one more thing uh, having to do with blending these weights and adjusting the animation. Right now we're kind of doing a pose to pose type of blend because we're grabbing the end state and blending between it. Even though it looks like we may be playing back the animation below it, what's happening is we're blending between the layers and each of the end states is kind of showing up there, showing us animation. So let's take this animation here and adjust it. And what I'm going to do is uh, just click on this solo checkbox which will allow us to solo only this layer. So you can see the animation that's happening only on that layer and I'm going to go here and then I'm going to add a little bit of a shake to this handshake. Okay, So go here and just kind of move this down, move it back up,
so we can see really clearly here where the actual keyframes lay in the timeline and this layer's animation. I'll uncheck Solo here again and just go through to see our animation. Okay. Now let's take the local weight of this and actually animate it over time. So let's say we want this animation to happen a little bit later. So we'll keep this weight to zero and we'll set a hold keyframe there at frame 20 and then up here at around frame 50 we'll bring that entire global weight up. Okay. So now the arm is going to come through but you can see very much how this is just adjusting that end pose. Okay, We're not getting the animation of it coming up and shaking hands and that's pretty much because both of these animations lay on the same plane in the timeline. So do, if we need to offset this animation, we can do it in a number of different ways. Um, you could go in and adjust the animation's keyframes by selecting the different objects and adjusting those over time. So, you know, this particular object, we have control over all the keyframes, so I could move it up, and then you can see that we get that animation over time. And Cat has introduced a really nice tool to kind of do this and offset the layer animation in time uh, very easily. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that tool which is up here the show ranges for layers. If we click on that it'll bring up the ranges for layers and you can see where all the animation is and the simple layer ranges. So what we can do is say okay well in our timeline we have this layer blending up. It kind of starts blending up at maybe frame 25. So maybe that's where we want to start the animation range for this layer. And that way it's going to blend up via frame 25 and we're going to get that handshake. Now the one thing that we've done here is we're actually blending both the keyframes and the weights for this. So what we want to do is just kind of press this plus sign here and you can see that we get both our weights and the transforms. Okay, So the weights are something that we actually want to keep blending the way that we set them to blend so that this animation kind of starts to happen there. And then the transform is something that we want to offset. So we can animate the transforms by just adjusting this time warp. So we want our weights to blend as they were here, but we're going to move the time warp, which will essentially just kind of move all the transforms for the character to start here. So now what will happen is we'll blend to that arm, and it'll stay in a still position, and here it's blended 100%, and now the animation will start. And now when we play this guy back, we can see that we blend that layer, the hand comes up, and then we get that shaking action. And it's not, it's blending to the animation as opposed to just the last pose. So that's a little bit about adjusting our weights locally, as well as using some of the tools to adjust where the animation lies and the keyframes to get better blending with your animation. Next we'll take a look at using adjustment layers to add on to our animation as well as blended together in the layer system.